Thank you, Blake, for that generous introduction. Uh, it's a, certainly a privilege for me to have the opportunity to lead this effort. Uh, uh, Hank, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, you really set the right tone, uh, gave the right message, and I, I, I really appreciate uh, what you are doing for our state and what you will do for our state. Uh, Blake, thank you for your leadership. Haley, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Jim, thanks for the remarks. Uh, we have made tremendous progress in education. Uh, many thanks goes to Jim and, and both his philanthropic efforts and uh, the, 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 the elbow grease that you've, you've put in on this issue. So thank you very much. So let's, let's get right to it. Uh, let's talk about uh, what the plan has to look like, what the plan needs to look like, and how we move this state forward. Uh, but before we do that, I'd, I'd just like to ask uh, those individuals in this, in this audience who served in any uh, way on Blueprint 04 to please stand. Just stand for a moment, let us see who you are. Blake. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the folks who were responsible for laying the foundation that we have now that will enable us to really fly with Blueprint 11. So let's, let's thank these folks for their good work. So as, so as Jim said, uh, any, any effort like this won't be successful without the right vision. And so let me just outline what the vision is, and that should come up on the screen. To enable a more prosperous, vibrant, and resilient Mississippi built upon a foundation of economic opportunity for all its citizens. And after all, isn't that what we want uh, for our fellow Mississippians? As a parent of a nine-year-old and six-year-old, that's what I want for my children. That's what I want for, for their classmates. That's what we should want for all Mississippians. Uh, it's, in, in fact, the same vision statement that we had in 04, and it's still appropriate today. So this, this next slide, uh, I think, appropriately uh, speaks to how grateful we are to the leadership of the MEC, uh, Momentum Mississippi, and the Partnership for Economic Development for their commitment to Blueprint 11 uh, with both their time and resources. Uh, we're also thankful to our cornerstone sponsors and our corporate sponsors, without which this obviously wouldn't be possible. And you see those, those uh, co uh, company names listed on the screens to, to both my left and right. And I think this is a good uh, uh, place for me to remind everyone that Blueprint 11 is entirely private funded. This is a one and a quarter million dollar effort. And without your support, uh, we couldn't make this plan happen. Uh, I should note that we're not there yet. Uh, we still need just over $100,000 to make certain that this effort is successful. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll walk you through what this, uh, I'll describe what this effort looks like, and I think you'll see that we've, we've laid out a very good plan uh, that is going to make an enormous difference for our state, for our business climate, for our children, uh, and it's a worthy, uh, it's a worthy, piece of, uh, of, 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 of process to invest in, and I hope you'll consider doing so. Uh, you heard a recap of the first blueprint effort uh, from Jim and uh, a, a bit from, from Blake. And in the first blueprint effort, we, we focused on business climate and image, education, and economic, and economic development. Uh, we are taking that same approach uh, and expanding it a bit. So let's go to the next slide. There are four major areas, educational achievement, resource management, economic competitiveness, and technology commercialization. So let me just take a couple of seconds on each one of these areas. Education achievement, we're talking about everything from early, ed ed early education, K-12, community colleges, university, to lifelong learning. Resource management, uh, we're talking about how to be creative uh, take creative approaches to more efficiently and effectively both grow and manage our natural human fiscal and social capital in Mississippi. Economic competitiveness, uh, there we're talking about incentives that uh, uh, for in targeting industries, fostering the proper tax and regulatory climates, and opportunities both realized and unrealized. And technology commercialization is turning the research outcomes into economic opportunities for existing businesses. Now, I think it's important to note that 
uh, there are about three areas that cross-cut and transcend all of these four areas. Uh, and those are community life, health care, and infrastructure. And if you think about those three areas for just a moment, it's really uh, intuitive how each one of those areas fit within each of the four broad areas. Uh, when we're talking about quality of life, we are including things like access to health care. Uh, we're talking about progress in race relations. We're talking about closing achievement gaps uh, among subpopulations of our students. I won't, go, I won't talk about each one of those, but you get the point. It's, it, all, those three areas absolutely transcend the four major areas. So how do we get there? Uh, what do we envision as the outcome um, of Blueprint 11? Uh, well, we think there are four major areas that will sort of be pulled into the report. The first one is that it's clear that we need to benchmark achievements. The report will start with an assessment of the progress made on Blueprint 2004 uh, recommendations. One of the things that we don't do enough of is to recognize and celebrate the achievements that have been made. Uh, Jim pointed out some of the wonderful achievements that have been realized through the efforts of Blueprint 04. We haven't done enough to communicate what those uh, successes are, and we certainly haven't done enough to celebrate them. And so we'll make certain that we pull out uh, those successes. We'll also point, point out where we didn't meet the mark. Uh, and fold, if appropriate, those new areas into Blueprint 11. Goals and metrics for the next decade. Many of these will be similar to the met metrics identified in Blueprint 04, and our report should include an assessment of our progress toward those initial goals. High priority actionable items. What specific actionable items, legislative, policy, regulatory, need to be accomplished in order for us to reach our goals and change our performance metrics. And then finally, uh, this is a new opportunity. This particular uh, part of the report was not included in Blueprint 04, and it's what I call the WHO. Uh, organizationals, organizations responsible for achieving the recommendations. We envision not just the blueprint for a more proper, uh, prosperous and vibrant Mississippi, but also a clear plan for who is going to be, uh, who is going to help us build that future. Uh, there will be uh, recommendations, Blake, I'm sure, that momentum will be tasked with. There will be, uh, uh, that, that the MEC will be tasked with. Haley, there will be, momentum will have opportunities. Uh, Swayze Foundation will have responsibility. IHL will have responsibility. I saw Tom Burnham a little early earlier. Tom, there may be recommendations that come out of this report that specifically fall on the Department of Education to accomplish. And so I, I'm really excited that we are taking the next step. We're going beyond just the blueprint and we're figuring out who's going to carry the hammers, who's going to bring the nails, who's going to have the saw, who's going to be responsible for putting this plan to action. So how will we get from final report uh, or how will we get to the final report? Let me talk a little uh, talk a little bit about process. And so, you'll see on this slide schematic, upper left hand corner. Uh, if you'll think of it uh, as a as a process that moves in a in a clockwise fashion, the top left hand corner uh, is the stakeholder piece. Uh, we will seek input from the stakeholders of Mississippi so that they may uh, state gaps in the needs and suggest ideas. They will tell us what is taking place in their communities and perhaps identify problems which haven't yet uh, had solutions identified. Uh, we're going to do this in a number of ways. Uh, all of you are familiar with the road show that the MEC puts on, and so that'll be one of the primary way, one of the primary tools that we use. But we'll also have a PR blitz. We have a blueprint website uh, that I'll encourage all of you to view. It is really very good. It includes. Uh, all of the uh, information from Blueprint 04, from recommendations to accomplishments. Uh, and then we need you. We need you to spread the word about Blueprint. We need you to help us capture information. And by the way, the process starts today. Uh, we are full steam ahead beginning today, 
and our, our absolute mission is to complete this process by October. We want to finish this process prior to the elections uh, because we want to be able to say to those seeking public office that this is what the state of Mississippi desires for its future. This is what the business community desires for its future. And so from, from that gathering of information at the really grassroots level, we'll move that information to the Project Council. The Project Council is a broad-based, statewide, diverse group that will review stakeholder input, provide additional input and give feedback, and then advance that information to the Advisory Council, which is in the bottom right corner. The Advisory Council, through committees and subcommittees, uh, will pinpoint trends and issues and organize the information into the four focus areas to develop recommendations for steering council approval. And then finally, that information will, will be moved to the steering council, uh, which will further review the uh, prioritize goals and recommendation and oversee the final publication of the final report. So timeline. Uh, the timeline that you see before you represents the schematic that was uh, shown on the previous page. Again, uh, I, won't, I won't read this to you, but uh, the timeline is basically this. We start today and we end in October. Lots of work has to take between now and then. And I guess the most important thing that I can say to you uh, is that we need your help. We need your input. We need your ideas. Uh, we want you to start thinking right now about how you want to participate. Uh, most, most especially, we need you to attend the roadshow. Uh, it's one of the best structured ways to really provide us good feedback. We want you to visit the website. Um, and you can st stay connected with this effort by uh, constantly checking our website, Blueprint Mississippi. Uh, and so I would encourage you to do that. And then let me just move you to the last slide, which is a picture of uh, the front page of Blueprint Mississippi website. And I want to point out uh, two reminders, I guess a negative one and a positive one, about why this effort's important. Uh, 62, where we are, 62% of parents in this state think that their children will have to move out of this state to get a good job. That's the bad news. That's the perception that we have to deal with and that we have to move beyond. And that quite frankly, we have to absolutely attack uh, like we're in life-saving mode. And then the good statistic is that 79% of the business leaders in this state absolutely believe that we possess all that it takes in this state right now to move this state in a way that other states have been successful, the North Carolinas. We can do that in Mississippi, and I would make a, the strong argument that Blueprint 11 is the guide for getting there. But it won't happen without your input, uh, it won't happen without your involvement. We made great progress in Blueprint, Blueprint 04, and we've built a strong foundation. Well, now is the time to put the house on the foundation. Uh, please get involved, and let's go to work. Blake, you want to come back up? Thank you. <laughs>